Algebra 2, Common Core, Amplitude, Frequency, and Period. So at this point, you've learned a little bit about trig uh, functions, sine and cosine, the, how they are cyclical periodic functions. Um, and, and in class, we discussed you know, the sine and cosine curves, why they look that way. Again, you can think about kind of a circle starting on the x-axis and going around that circle. The height increases uh, until you get to 90 degrees, and then it decreases to 180 continues decreasing to the bottom of the circle 270 and it increases back up as it finishes the full 360 and that's what this is you'll notice here we have our radian versions of 90 180 270 and 360 and then the same thing for cosine again if you picture that circle but it's instead of thinking of the height think about you know far uh, right and left think about the x values that when we start all the way to the right we have the highest x value and then as the graph goes up it travels left at 90 degrees uh, but that's when it's equal to the y-axis, and then it continues traveling left to the leftmost point, which is 180 degrees away, and then it comes back and travels back to the right. And so that's your cosine graph, you know, going down and then up, your x values decreasing and then increasing as you go around a circle. Um, so we should be familiar with these curves, uh, but we want to talk about now the transformations of the sine and cosine curves. And transformations is something you spend a lot of time in geometry talking about. Um, the rotations, reflections, dilations, translations. We're going to focus mostly on dilations today, and the next video we'll talk mostly about translations. Um, we do a little bit of reflections too. We reflect the x-axis, you'll see. Uh, you know, flip it upside down. Uh, but we don't do much with rotations um, on these trig graphs or, or function graphs in general. And all these rules that we're going to talk about as far as dilations and reflections and translations apply, we're going to see this throughout the course in other functions as well when we do exponential graphs and logarithmic graphs and even parabola graphs we, we, we talk about a little bit too. So, all right, so let's jump in a little bit. The things we want to discuss today are amplitude, frequency, and period. So like your typical sine graph or sinusoidal function, if, if, if the dilations, dilations are what we want to talk about today. And dilations come from multiplying. And there's two ways of multiplying things. I can multiply something in front of sine or I can multiply something in front of x, right? right? I could have you know, instead of sine x, I could have y equals 2 sine x, or I could have y equals sine 2x. And what this multiplication does is it, they are dilations, and, and it, essentially they stretch the graph vertically and horizontally and compress the graph vertically and horizontally and stuff like that. Um, but it's really pretty straightforward what happens here, and after a couple of quick examples, you'll see real quick. The a that's in front of the functions, the absolute value of it is called the amplitude. And the amplitude is basically the height of the wave. Let's, let's write that there. It's the height of the wave. Height of the wave. Height of wave. And that's a dilation of the y-axis, meaning I could have like a really small wave or I could have really big waves. You know, so um, the height of the wave is, is referred to as amplitude. And it changes the relative maximum and minimum. Think of it, the higher wave you have, the the higher the maximum and the lower the minimum, and that's what your range is. Your range is your max to your minimum, your, your y values. Remember, domain is x and range is y. So your amplitude is very closely related to maximum, minimum, and range. Now, if a happens to be negative, like if you have y equals negative to sine x, what does that do? Well, it's still a dilation, but what happens is when you negate the front of a function like this, it is a reflection across the x-axis. So that's when the graph is upside down. So negative sine x will look like that. Negative cosine will look like that. It's a reflection over the x-axis. So if you see a negative in there. Now that doesn't change the amplitude, though. That's why we say absolute value of a is amplitude. Like if I have, in this case, my y equals negative 3 cos x, it's going to be upside down because of the negative, but my amplitude would still be positive 3. Because the, the height is still 3, even if I start down here, it's still going to go up to 3 at some point, because the wave just keeps going. So amplitude is always positive, remember that. Um, so we want to compare a couple of graphs. What happens when we put different numbers in front of sine and cosine? What, what happens to their shapes? Um, so I have my old calculator here, but I'm going to try to use a new software that has this giant screen, uh, which would be good for a day like today. Uh, so y equals, first let's just get our standard stuff in here. Let's just do sine. So y equals sine x. And when you're doing trig, you have to hit the zoom button. And then number 7 down here you see is trigonometry. So zoom 7, and it will give me a trig graph. And that's my sine curve. 
but I want to restrict it to just 0 to 360. So if I go in the window, I can do that. Now, notice that my x min and max are 8s. That's because my mode is still on radian. So I could work in radian mode if I want, but I think most of you, even if we have 2 pi written on the graph, you're kind of thinking 360. Um, so I'm going to change it to degree mode, and then I could go to my window and change my window to go from 0 degrees to a max of 360 degrees. And let's take a look at that graph then. <clears throat> so there's your just basic sine curve. Okay, and that's exactly what we have up here on top of the page, your sine curve. And, and the basic sine curve is an amplitude of 1. It has a height of 1. And by amplitude, I should mention this too, the amplitude is not like highest to lowest. That would be range. Amplitude is just your highest to like the middle of the graph. So that's your amplitude, not that. Um, so don't confuse that. The amplitude is the height above like the midline of the graph. That was that is something that we call the midline there. Uh, so, all right, back to my giant calculator here. So here's sine x. What happens when I make it, uh, sorry, I got to go back to the cursor there. Oh, wrong calculator. What happens when I change sine x to just, um, well, what was the first one we wanted to do down here? 2 sine x. So I want to compare 2 sine x, half sine x, things like that. Well, I keep picking the wrong calculator. All right, so let's change it to 2 sine x. And I'll keep the original one in there as blue so we can compare. And so now in red, you see that it has a higher wave. Again, look at the, the max was 1, now it is 2. The amplitude is it's 2 above that graph. And you could really kind of predict what's going to happen here for the rest of these, I would imagine. So what if we did 4 sine x? Well, you're going to see a wave that goes, you know, up to 4 and down to 4. You know, so the amplitude changes there. If we were to change it to uh, half sine x, so I could do 0.5 sine x, you'll see that it only goes halfway there. And so it's, it's the same thing with cosine. You know, let me delete these, clear all these things out here. Um, and I'll just put a cosine curve in. Uh, so if we type in cosine x, I guess I'll do it in red. You know, there's your basic cosine curve. And then if we want to look at, say, 3 cosine x, and we'll type in that curve and compare these two graphs together. So first, in red, it'll draw the basic cosine graph. And then in black is 3 cosine x. So everything is just being stretched. It's being dilated. Now, there was one example here again. Well, what about negative 3 cosine x? All right, well, negative 3 cosine x. I'll do it in this blue one. Negative 3 cosine x. I'm going to see it looks the same as 3 cosine x, except reflected. So instead of starting at a max, it starts at a minimum. Instead of being at the lowest at 180, it's the highest at 180. So that, that's negative cosine. You know, and, and the graphs of sine and cosine do look similar because they're waves. Remember, cosine always starts at a max or a minimum if it's flipped upside down. Sine starts at the midline even if it's flipped upside down because it's starting here and going up or it's starting here and going down. So based on where the graph starts, we could usually tell what we're looking at. All right, and uh, back to this now. So that's amplitude. Next we get frequency. Now frequency is if you if you change the coefficient of x, not sine. So instead of, you know, 2 cos x, cos 2x, sine 4x, half x, 3x. What does that do? Well, frequency has to do with, you know, how many waves you see. Sorry if you're hearing the uh, school bell in the background. That's my fault. Um, we're in between periods right now, but that's okay. I'll keep going. I don't have a class coming in. But if you hear announcements, I apologize for that. Actually, let me, let me pause for a second. So for frequency, let's type in some of these examples and see what happens here. So y equals, let me clear all this out. Um, again, we have the basic cosine graph typed in there. Well, what happens if we type in cosine 2x and compare these graphs? And you see that our, it's actually going to do the 2 cosine x first in blue. And then there's cosine x. And so what you notice is that it has two cycles of cosine instead of one in the 0 to 360 window. If we were to change it to be cosine 4x, we'll see four full cycles of cosine. And frequency is how often. So it's how often am I going to see cosine in that 
zero to um, two pi window, that zero to three sixty window. All right, so let's look at sine now. Um, let's do just a regular sine x in blue, and then we'll do sine two uh, x in black, sine three x. Uh, 2x is in red, 3x is in black, and then let's do sine half x. Where we only see half of the cycle. All right, so first it's going to show us the basic sine curve. I see one wave of sine in that window. Now I see two waves of sine. Then I see three waves of sine. And then the last one was just sine half x. So I'm only going to see half of the wave of sine, which is the top part without the bottom. And so the frequency and amplitude are very visual. You can clearly see the, the height of the graph changing or the amount of waves you see changing throughout it. The other important piece with period, uh, with frequency, is something called period. And they're very closely connected. And it's where the first cycle ends. So looking at this again, uh, let me get rid of a couple of these graphs, actually, so I could clearly show you what I'm talking about. That um, So let me... I'll keep the original, I'll keep the the, uh, the first three there. Well, let me just get the first two for a second. So, for regular sine x and sine 2x, here's sine x, and the first wave, because there's only one wave, ends at 360, or 2 pi. But when I do sine 2x, I have more waves, so the first one ends in a different location. And period is where that ends. So this location would be 180, or pi. That's where the first wave ends. And we have a formula for that, and that is right here. A period is 2 pi over frequency. So like in this example right here, because my frequency is 2, my period would be, it's always 2 pi over whatever your frequency is. So 2 pi over 2 simplifies out to be just pi, which is 180. And I see that in the graph here, that it ends at 180. Uh, let's go back to... The um, our calculator, and let's let's do the uh, three. So let me get rid of the two and type in sine three x, and take a look at where it ends. So here's regular sine x, wave ending at three sixty. Here's three sine x. Now the first wave ends around here. Now what is that location? Well, that location, because it has a frequency of three, if I do two pi over the frequency of three. It's 2 pi over 3. That's where it ends. And 2 pi over 3, I think that's 120. Yeah, it's 120 degrees. So it's, it's about a third of the way, and that makes sense. It's a third of 360. It's, because that's why, that's why it's 2 pi divided by you know, your frequency, because 2 pi is the window. So if I divide by how many waves I have, it'll tell me where the first wave ends, or, or the length in the increment of waves. Um, so period is 2 pi over frequency, but also frequency is 2 pi over period. You can go back and forth with these. Um, and a lot of times you're given one and you need the other. Like a lot of times in word problems, I give you this, but I need frequency for the equation. Or if I give you the equation, I'm giving you frequency, so then I can do 2 pi over it to get the period kind of thing. So 2 pi over 1 is the other. Uh, so real quick uh, time check, about 13 minutes. These trig videos are always longer. Um, this graph right here, tell me a little bit about it. Well, the amplitude is 2. I see that from here. Uh, the frequency is 3. I see that from here. Uh, the period is 2 pi divided by the frequency. So 2 pi over 3. Uh, remember, that's just 360 divided by you know, 3. So that means the first one's going to end at 120, which is 2 pi over 3. The maximum is the highest point on the graph because your amplitude is 2, and we're starting in the middle would be 2. The minimum would be negative 2. So the range would be negative 2 to 2. All right, and we're going to expand on this as we bring in translations and other things. But that's you know what you need to know for now, how we can dilate these graphs and change their y-axis, which is changing their amplitude. And I could change their x-axis, which is changing their frequency. And connected to frequency is where that first wave will end, which is called period. All right, that's it. See ya.